schlock, exploitation, and sci-fi. B-movies have made a mark at the box office and on pop culture with low-budget thrills and genre-bending chills. Suggest you have fun and spend your money. On this IMDb Brief, we trace the origin of the B-movie, how it evolved, and what it takes to earn the B-movie badge of honor. What's up, guys? Though once defined as any movie shorter than 80 minutes, B-movies earned their letter grade as the lesser half of a double feature. The A film had the big stars and budgets to match, while the B-movie could be thought of as the B-side to a record's hit A-side single. Without lavish sets or household names to promote on their posters, B-movies relied on scintillating titles like Gun Crazy, or on terrifying genre tales like The Blob or The Tingler to get teens in seats. The walls. The walls. Across the pond, the UK stimulated their film industry with quota quickies, ensuring that the country kept producing its own pictures and that theaters wouldn't be flooded with US movies. These British B-movies also served to educate up-and-comers for bigger productions, including the legendary Michael Powell's earliest efforts, like 1934's Something Always Happens. This great city is full of opportunity. As westerns went the way of the buffalo, horror found its foothold in the 19th 1940s. Horror could be cheaply produced, relying on catchy central premises instead of famous names, such as RKO's ultra-low-budget Cat People, which featured people turning into panthers as a metaphor for sexual arousal. You resist temptation admirably. Temptation. After World War II, film noir and science fiction rose in popularity as former soldiers struggled to find their place in a changing America, like in 1955's detective story Kiss Me Deadly, and a collective anxiety about the atomic bomb was mined for special effects sensationalism in 1953's scary sci-fi It Came From Outer Space. What was that? A meteor. One of the biggest. Drive-ins boomed across the U.S. in the 1950s, and creature features like It Came From Beneath the Sea and Them were literally larger than life. Biker films like Motor Psycho and The Wild Angels also revved their engines as the 1950s turned to the 60s and the American spirit freewheeled toward the summer of love. Yeah, we don't want nobody telling us what to do. We don't want nobody pushing us around. The King of the Bees, Roger Corman, produced, wrote, and directed hundreds of bee movies, including The Wild Angels, with a simple model. Fast, cheap, and in his full control. He'd reuse sets, casts, and crews to meet an unquenchable thirst for new pictures, while also mentoring filmmakers like Francis Ford Coppola, Martin Scorsese, Joe Dante, James Cameron, Peter Bogdanovich, and Ron Howard. Ron wrestles his red-hot rolls up on two wheels into a spectacular chicky run with a whirly bird. When Jaws and Star Wars changed the blockbuster game, genre pictures moved up to the big leagues. 1970s black exploitation also found an untapped audience with huge returns on the low-budget badassery of 1972's Superfly and 1975's Dolomite. You can learn more about blockbusters, more black exploitation in past IMD Brief episodes. And soon, the VHS revolution would make the B-movie market almost obsolete. It must be you lose. the aroma from Troma. So B-movies had to evolve. Crafty schlocksters like Troma Pictures carved out a home video niche, then found consistent programming in the growing 24-7 cable TV rotation with gonzo gore fests like Class of Newcomb High, or the first superhero from New Jersey, The Toxic Avenger. Are you okay? Not everyone saw the B as a scarlet letter. Director Tim Burton made an ode to one particular B-movie huckster with 1994's double Oscar-winning Ed Wood. Thank you so much. You won't regret it. I won't let you down. By the 2000s, mockbuster productions of a company like The Asylum made a mark with movies that almost had the same title as that summer's blockbuster, hoping to convince video renters that Transmorphers is just as good as Transformers. They'd later double down on the mock for the out-of-control Oceanic franchise that spawned six films, Sharknado. Quentin 
Quentin Tarantino and Robert Rodriguez tried to keep exploitation alive with 2007's Grindhouse double feature, and M. Night Shyamalan proudly dipped into B-movie making in 2008's The Happening. Are you joking? Even if the B-movie distinction has fallen out of favor, the campy and exploitative spirit will never be snuffed out as long as our fears and dreams are reflected on celluloid. For more schlocky cinema and trending tales, stay tuned to imdb.com slash imdbrief.